Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesAtrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Crazy, crazy market today, right? Um, you would never know in a million years if you were uh, just a passive investor looking at, you know, looking at uh, the market wrap-up today, you would never know how strong uh, the majority of leaders today were on the nasdaq if you are brand new to the channel before we continue guys just drop a like we really appreciate your viewership uh we really thank you for the 10 15 minutes uh that you spend with us on a daily basis we really do appreciate it we continue uh to provide this content uh all we ask is a like a share and tell a friend and all is good uh in the world other than that back to the regular schedule program so you know like I was saying, you would never know, right? You'd never know. If you look at the final index uh, totals, you turn around and go, wow, the market had a really, really crappy day. The Dow was down 336 points or 1%, the S&P off 26, and the NASDAQ, ah, NASDAQ didn't do anything, down 22, uh, 22 points. But what you didn't see was what we started talking about last night in the video. We talked about names that were rested, putting in two, three days rest, right? All you have to do is go back to uh, last night's video, we were talking about the NVIDIA's of the world, the Microsoft's of the world, the AMD's of the world, the stocks that had big, big runs that were consolidating for two, three days. And all they needed to do was get a little bit of a push out of the range to start making the next leg up. I didn't think for a second, right? I did not believe for a minute that today was going to be one of those scenarios that not only were they going to wake up, that they were going to expand with a lot of aggression and that's exactly what happened today. And at some point today, I looked up and I go, how is the you know NASDAQ only up, you know, 35 points? It was it, it felt like the NASDAQ at one point today, for you guys who, who trade uh, mega cap uh, technology names, they felt like the NASDAQ was up like 250, 300 today. You had NVIDIA, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. NVIDIA at one point, you know, one point went to, you know, 99. I mean, the, the stock was, you know, the stock was at one point up 10. Uh, Microsoft lost its mind today at the open, put up a $4 candle at the open. AMD went ballistic, absolutely ballistic at the open. You had Google, right? Massive call buying. Amazon, uh, not only was Amazon strong, Amazon closed. This is the highest formation, right? Since, that, since the move on February the 2nd of that 114 high print. So you had incredible, you know, absolutely incredible stocks. Now, now did everything go up? No, of course not. Uh, names like Meta continue to rest, but I'm watching, right? It's the same scenario that we talked about yesterday with Microsoft, NVIDIA, uh, and um, and AMD, right? They're resting on a range. So I'm watching NVIDIA for, uh, I'm watching Meta for tomorrow. Stock like Apple, right? Didn't participate today, but it's doing exactly the same thing we talked about last night on Microsoft's, uh, and on the Microsoft take, even though Apple, and the same thing, it's the same language, even though Apple is putting in three days in a row of lower highs, it's still just like Microsoft yesterday is still putting in three consecutive days of higher lows and hugging the 10 day moving average. Now, the question is, is it going to do perform the same thing uh, that Microsoft did say? We don't know. We don't know that, but I am watching the top of the range here. So if it could reclaim back the five day moving average on Apple, this thing should wake up. Same thing with Meta, right? Same trades over and over again. It's been the one cool thing about the technology trade is they've been literally, literally taking, um, taking turns, right? When Microsoft is strong, Apple rests. When Apple's it rests, uh, Nvidia is strong. When Nvidia rests, Meta wakes up. So you know, next couple of days, I definitely want to watch Apple. I definitely want to watch Meta. Uh, they look, you know, they look pretty good. They look like they're prime and ready. Unless you know, obviously the market. Uh, implodes, uh, everything I'm saying here uh, becomes kind of irrelevant. But the point is, we have to be prepared on both sides of the market. And when you saw today's action, uh, this is one of those days I, I've, I've always um, I've always maintained, again, I, what this business put me through, especially, uh, I'm doing this for 24 years. Uh, I started in end of 1998. Uh, 1999 was like the internet craze. What this business put me through mentally and psycho psychologically 
uh, and emotionally for the first five years. I wouldn't wish it on my on on my worst enemy. So the idea is when people start talking about with with this gleam of joy and happiness, how much they love trading, it, it blows my mind because I don't I never had the same I, I never had the same exp uh, experience, especially in the first uh, five years. But I will say, if trading was like this today, right? If trading was like this every single day and you're getting measured potential moves within 15 minutes of the trading day, I'll be honest with you, brother would like would love trading. But again, not every single day uh, is like this. Again, we'll get to the pivots uh, in a second. Uh, big disconnect, right? People said, you know, people asked me today, um, does it bother you that the S&P was red while the NASDAQ was going higher? And, and I kept on reiterating the point, and I've been reiterating the point uh, for, for many, many years now. I think the days of the market, right? When people talk about the market is over, right? Um, I, I don't believe that Home Depot, and again, you could make a case that, you know, Home Depot's, uh, you know, earnings shook the Dow Jones today. Okay, who cares? I, I didn't even know the Dow was even red today towards the, until towards the end of the day, especially with a 300 point move. Okay. Um, I, I've, I've learned a long time ago, and, and it really has played out for, for many, many years, that there's no such thing as a stock market anymore. So meaning that, you know, if Microsoft is strong, IBM has to be strong. If IBM is weak, that means Intel has to be weak. No, it doesn't work like that. It's such a specific place now. It's no more stock market. Now we have a market full of stocks and they could stand on their own two feet and it's all stock independent and it's all stock specific. So one day you can have the semiconductor is red and then the next day, just like today, they're just blowing doors for 90% of the day. Uh, they're blowing doors and blowing shorts out of the water, especially uh, aggressively at the open. So this disconnect, uh, you know, look, if this was 20 years ago, I'd probably say, yeah, there's something really, really fishy. But look where the cues are, right? Look, look, look where, look where the cues are, and it's very, very tough to turn around and go, "Yeah, I see a problem." But look, tomorrow we could have a day that we engulf five days worth of buying. We're having this conversation here at the bottom of the range, but until that happens, it's very, very tough to kind of read into read into it. Uh, I think a lot of traders put in so much time to try to outguess the market, and outthink the market, and outsmart the market, and what will end up happening is. Uh, they eventually get so cute that they outsmart themselves and reality kicks in and, and you know, here we go again. Um, but I, I do, I do like certain things. I, I do like the way the NASDAQ has been, um, you know, making its way higher as the bank uh, fiasco starting a couple of months ago uh, has been taking its toll. Even the days that, the, you know, there's new uh, defaults. Uh, I know they slowed down a little bit uh, in the, in the regional banking space, the NASDAQ continues to go higher. Again, is that case there's only five, six stocks to take in the market higher. I disagree. How can it be five, six stocks? Look at, go through the NASDAQ 100, right? You, you have predominantly all of them, you know, but not all of them, but most of them, you know, close to, you know, close to the top or at least the middle of the range. So it's, so the idea that this rally uh, that started on uh, January the 11th, when we reclaimed uh, the 50 day moving average is based on five stocks. I, I just don't buy it. Okay. I just don't buy it because again, um, I know how aggressive you know the market has been, especially in the technology space. And and here's the you know, here's the follow up question: If you really deem believe right, if you really believe that the only five stocks are taking up the market, well, why aren't you playing those five stocks? Right? It's only a question that you could answer. So it, it's very very easy uh, to point fingers and make blame and this that the third. It's process over everything. Process over opinion. Process over uh, you know the scoreboard. Process over the news. It's either going to go or it's not. It's a simplistic. It's a simplistic uh, idea, and it's so simplistic to understand. But a stock could only do two things: it could either go up, it could either go down, right? It can't go in circles, and it can't go. It feels that way sometimes, right? But it can't do anything but either go up or down. It's our job as traders, whatever, whatever your specific process is. You could be trading pivots with me. You could be trading small caps and mid caps and whatever crypto. Your job is to identify the edge in that price movement, right? It's not the market makers, it's not the dark pools, it's not some guy pulling the strings. Your entry is just not right, right? And that's what I've accepted a long time ago. So when I lose money on the trade, it has nothing to do about some outside force, you know, pulling the string. I effed up, right? I effed up, it was my fault. So the idea that the market is going up on three to five stocks, I think it's silly. Guys, go do your research, chart the, you know, chart the NASDAQ 100, uh, chart the S&P 500, uh, hell, even some names are still, you know, doing really, really well. They represent the Russell. But the point is your specific strategy, your specific process 
is going to be judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to success uh, or failure. So as of right now, again, the market continues to, to, you know, to benefit strong stocks. Strong names continue to get bid up on dips every single day. You see the majority of days weakness. All of a sudden, buyers come in, option flow kicks in, short term, short term out of the money call or buyers come in. And next thing you know, two days later, uh, the stock is exploding uh, once again. So that's it. I think until we start losing back the five day moving average on the queues, uh, you know, it, it's very, very hard for me to switch my tune considering it's just working, right? It's just absolutely working. So whether you're trading technology uh, or not, again, I always uh, encourage everybody to try everything. I, I actually uh, tweeted this out. Uh, on my private, uh, on my uh, on my public feed, and I ask for all you guys who've been following me for years and years and years. And we've been demonstrating the power of the pivot for like 12, 13 years now, right? And, and I always ask. I, I was very, very curious to say, and I said, "Well, I'm just curious. Why haven't you tried uh, big tech tech technology names? You know, the Apples, the you know, the Metas, the Teslas of the world." And I, I obviously, there's a lot of answers, but you know, there's only three things I could think of, right? Either uh, your account balance will not let you participate in higher price stocks, which I get, uh, whether it's your process that you're just unsure of, you know, you're unsure of the price action, how to navigate them, I get it. Or is it just a simple case of fearing the unknown, right? You know, fearing the unknown. It's like first time getting behind a wheel, a wheel of a car. Now that, you know, I'm 49 years old, I started driving when I'm 16. You know, at 16 years old, every every you know every move of the car, you're freaking out. Now, you know, like a lot of us, you know, I'm driving since 16. I'm gonna be 49 years old next month. I could literally drive two hours and zone out, not even watch the road, and I'll get there. So, is it the fear of of not understanding uh, what these beta names are? Because again, if you break down trading in the most basic essence of all, it's technical analysis that is driven by institutional capital, especially via the options market that when they confirm, usually good things are going to happen. If that's the case, guys, uh, and if you do want to try pivots, I invite you, you know, kick it, you know, kick the tires in the webinar for 30 days. If nothing at all, I think you'll get a really good sense of why these pivots are different, why there's an edge to these pivots, and why it's so crucial to go in the direction of the institutional money instead of going against this. If you are, uh, if you are interested, there's a link uh, below uh, under the comment section that Kyler always puts in on, on a daily basis. I'm telling you, I, I think if you give it a shot for, for 30 days, I think there's something uh, that you will at least see that you're probably not seeing now in the forms of technical analysis. So let's get to the charts, right? Uh, Tesla right now is going through its investors meeting. Uh, Elon Musk is, you know, talking this, that, and the third, giving updates on Twitter giving updates on Tesla. Something so far, you know, I, I only heard it, uh, you know, for a little bit. Uh, so far, it's not groundbreaking, right? It's not groundbreaking. It's not earth shattering. Uh, the stock is basically up about a buck. If you guys remember in last night's video, I'm still watching the bottom of the range, okay? I don't know what time you're going to, um, you know, see this video, okay? I have no idea, but I'm watching the bottom of the range here. <clears throat> if the stock can't rally after Elon Musk talks and finishes up with his, uh, in, you know, his, uh, his investors day. Guys, watch the bottom of the range here. I'm telling you, we, we've been seeing a lot of put buying for this week. The 160s, the 155s, the 150s. Look, again, you might be watching this video and Tesla might be up 10 tomorrow. I don't know, but I'm preparing. All we can do is preparing, not anticipating, uh, not starting a position before it's time. But I'm preparing because if this guy stops talking and the stock doesn't rally and gets rejected off the previous day's range and finally takes out the bottom range here, we got to watch this thing to the downside for tomorrow, guys. So again, right as of right now, it is up about a buck. I know the e-signal stupid wicks, uh, but it's up about a buck after the close. I, I want to watch this thing tonight. Uh, if it starts losing the bottom of the range here on the daily chart, I, I think... Uh, it could be a really good potential trade. So let's go. Let's get to uh, the pivots uh, for today. Uh, crowd, I, I still like this crowd. Never got up there. 136 rejected twice. Uh, needs to build. Never got there. Meta 1426 needs to build. Never got there. Here we go. Microsoft out of a cannon. Out of its mind. We talked about this last night. Uh, 311.12 uh, needs to build. Here was the sneaky, sneaky channel we were talking about. Remember we were talking about yesterday? Three consecutive days 
of higher lows, lower highs, and three consecutive days of higher lows. Well, it finally got above the range, took out 311.12. That was the high from 511 and went all the way up to uh, almost uh, 314. Beautiful, beautiful move on Microsoft. Uh, AI, nice trade on, on AI for all you guys who took it. AI, I didn't trade today. I traded uh, NVIDIA, uh, Microsoft. I got a dip buy on AI. Excuse me, I got a dip buy on AI. Um, I didn't trade the strength of the 2431, but Microsoft was really good. AI, uh, 2431, they were coming for... Uh, the $25 call stopped at 2480s before reverse. NVIDIA was awesome today. Uh, 289.70 uh, needs to build. Here is NVIDIA. Again, we talked about this last night. Here's the top of the channel here, 289.50. Yesterday's high was 289.70. So 289.70, 290 just absolutely exploded. Uh, went almost to 299. Phenomenal, phenomenal move there. Uh, AMD, again, we talked about it in last night's video, went out of its mind today. They were coming for the 99, the 100s right at the open, and the 105s, 106 for next week. Uh, 97.50 needs to build. Here is 97.50. Again, we talked about this back-to-back -back days last night, right on the video, guys. Uh, right on the video, 97.50 got rejected twice. It reclaimed that, just went out of its mind, traded to 103. Just an absolute... Uh, amazing, amazing move. Uh, ACBI didn't uh, didn't confirm. Uh, DVAGs didn't confirm. And uh, that, oh, here we go. Test, uh, CCL, 1040 needs to build. Size buyers coming for the 11. You know, rallied about 25 cents. And Amazon, 114, uh, massive channel needs to close above. It didn't close above, but it stock traded uh, almost to 115. Look at those call buyers that are coming in, you guys. 15, 20, 25 of short-term expiration. So that's it, man. So tomorrow, again, uh, we look like we have a pretty, pretty good uh, solid session for tomorrow. Come early uh, for all you guys who are coming into the webinar. Nice and early for morning strategy. If not, I'll see the rest of you guys on a video tomorrow night. Have a great night, everybody. God bless.